In this video, we're going to look at colouring in various colours using the flood tools under the bitmap drop down menu. As you can see here, I've loaded this image into the software and I've already reduced the colours down to nine colours. Okay, so I'm going to show you what the flood fill options are. So if I go to the bitmap drop down, then you've got something called Flood Fill, you've got Flood Fill Selective, and you've also got Flood Fill Vectors. Now, I'll be completely honest with you, the only one of these that I personally use is Flood Fill Vectors. And the only reason for doing that is to colour in various parts of the design so that when I machine them, I can overlay that on the top and it gives me sort of a real life image. So I'll show you flood fill first of all. So if I were to select, let's say the green color as the primary color, and let's just zoom in and I'll just select this purple color. You can see that I can start coloring in bits. Now you have to be careful because obviously you may not want to do that bit. If you do it wrong, just undo. And then you can just select again, whatever bits that you want to actually color in. Okay, so that's what flood fill does. It will change a color to whatever color you have as your primary color. So if I've got that as purple and I want to put them back, I can put them back, maybe change that to purple and change the two swirls at the top. Okay, so that's how you can change certain colors if you ever need to. We also have Flood Fill Selective. Now what this does, it changes the color until it hits another color if you'd like. So if I were to change that to be the primary color and select on the white, it will change everything on the white to be the brown color and it will stop when it touches a different color it will stop if i undo that and change it to be the green color and do it when it touches a different color it will stop so because i selected the white if i select this color you can see it changes the color there Now, if I were to change the secondary color to, let's say, the yellow, and then do it on the white, you'll see that it comes until it touches the yellow, okay? Now, to be completely honest, I never, ever use this tool. You may find it useful for something, but personally, I don't ever use this. Right, so the one that I do use is the flood fill to vectors. So if I go back to there, and let's open up this bitmap layer, let's go back to the original bitmap layer, okay, and turn on the vectors. Okay, so here you can see that I've got this sign that I've created, and I've also got some tool paths, okay? So what I'm going to do is color in certain sections of this. Now let's say the walkies, I want that to be, let's say, a red color okay so if I select all of those and then select flood fill vectors and it automatically changes the color to be red so if I were to simulate this now and I'll just simulate all the tool paths okay and then select there hold it down so it doesn't display the material it displays the bitmap and that will give me white with the red okay now this is quite useful if you want to build up what it actually looks like when you finish the piece so if I were to go to there and let's say Bella and Max here I want those to be blue and then select flood fill vectors they turn blue so if I go to simulation again in the 3d view you can see that it's updated to blue. Okay, so whatever I do in the 2D view as flood filling vectors, it changes the simulation. 
So if I go back and then maybe take a look at the difference between there and there and these also, and then let's change those to be, let's say, green. I know the colours don't really match. It's just so you get an idea of how to do this. So if I go to bitmap, flood fill vectors, all of those become green. Go to the 2D view and you can see that I've got this green outline. Now, what is important when you do this is the order that you do it. Because let's say that I wanted this whole surface to be, let's say, black. Okay. So if we go back to the 2D view and I select that, 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 because I don't want to colour these in. Okay, and change that to black, and then I flood fill vectors. You can see it's done everything over the top. So what you would need to do then is to select all of that again. So the walk is, let's go back to red, flood fill vectors, Max and Bella. Let's do that, let's say a brighter colour so we can see it. Flood fill those vectors. Now if we go to the 3D view, you can see that I've got this black simulation with all of the colours that are specified. And you can also delete the waste material, like so, and you can sort of get quite a decent looking finished piece by doing this. If you want to go back to the original material, just select there, it takes you back to the original material. Okay, so this is different to applying a depth color. So if I apply a depth color, it does it over the whole area that's been machined. Okay, so this is different to that. So I've selected to display the bitmap, and then because I've got the, the depth color on there, it will show the depth color, which is the yellowy color. So that's where it's proceeding. But what I've also done is shown the bitmap. So the bit where it's not machining is in black. So you can get this sort of effect by doing that. Okay, so if I were to turn the depth color off, it will go back to how I created it. So that's how you flood fill various components.